Welcome back to KMM Tech. I just finished doing the video for um, the basement um, Philips Hue light demo thing that I was doing. And it made me think about something. Um, and that is switches versus buttons. And that has actually gone into kind of an hour and a half of trying new things and troubleshooting some things and then realizing there was a much easier way to do it. So <clears throat> um, let me show you a couple things and talk a little about buttons and switches and then kind of revisit a topic that we had talked about a few weeks ago and change some things there. So um, first off, let's talk about buttons and switches. So what is the difference between a button and a switch is the first question. So as far as I'm concerned, a switch has two states. It has an on state and it has an off state. A button has a push, it's a trigger essentially, so it triggers a result. It does not have on and off states. So if you watched my basement video about the Philips Hue lights, you'll know that I created two switches here. A switch to turn the basement lights full on at um, 5500 Kelvin and a switch to turn them on at on a color of purple. So if I turn the switch off, it'll turn off the switches, uh, the, the lights. You'll see that both switches turn off. And if I put the, the purple switch on, you'll see that this turns on my lights are now purple but you'll notice that this switch turned on as well because it's just realizing that the lights are on or off it doesn't really recognize that it's a different color it just knows the lights are on or the lights are off so i was thinking about it and i, I think that it, it's going to be more common for me to have the lights um, turned on to full daytime brightness and then from there i will probably then switch it to the purple so it probably makes more sense for me to use a button here as opposed to a switch. So if I go here, I can then change this to a button. So currently my, my lights are um, set at 5,500 Kelvin. You can see that that's supposed to be 5,500 Kelvin. It doesn't look, look like that at all, but that's okay. Um, so if I hit the button, you'll notice that that now changes to the purple color. So and I can still use this to turn the lights off. And if I turn them on, they go to full brightness at 5,500 Kelvin. Now we can go to purple. So now that works. So that made me think about the next part of this, which led to the kind of troubleshooting and testing and doing all sorts of other things. Um, so let's go into a rule that I showed you guys how to create a few weeks ago called bedtime rule new. So if you remember, I had this, um, this device, which I call bedtime. Okay. And it is a virtual switch. Okay. We created the virtual switch. And what this rule says is if that virtual switch turns on, oops, sorry, ignore that for a second. Let me, let me fix this. Just ignore what I'm doing. This was part of my test that I just realized I didn't even need to test. <clears throat> okay, so what the rule says is that if the bedtime turns on, it's currently off, um, to turn the, the volume of my bedroom speaker to 100%, turn off this um, harmony activity, turn off this light, turn the thermostat fan on, and then turn this, this actual switch off at after two seconds so after doing my little test with the dashboard and the buttons i went hey i could make this a button and it'll work well it won't and it won't work for a couple of reasons first off if you look at um let's go to the devices now let's go to apps sorry if you go to first off the alexa app oops i'm sorry i just woke up your Amazon devices. So the Amazon Echo app. If you look up here, you'll see it says select switches. It does not recognize buttons. So if I turn this bedtime from a virtual switch to a button, it will not show up in the Amazon Echo app. However, it does show up in the Google Home app. And I have a Google Home in my bedroom, and that's primarily where I trigger that bedtime rule to work um, by a verbal command. However, no matter what I said, 
push the button. I tried, you know, giving it an actual button number and tried, hey, push button one, push, nothing worked. Um, so then I came back down to switch everything back to what it was, put this back to a virtual switch, and then I saw this up here. And I should have looked at this earlier. Enable auto off, and it's currently disabled. So if you look at our rule, you'll see that there's this this bedtime off delayed thing and that turns the switch off after a period of two seconds. Well, I'm going to delete that because we don't need that. So this one is going to get deleted. So now what's going to happen is when the bedtime switch turns on, it's going to set the volume to hundred percent. It's going to turn off this activity, turn off that light, turn on the fan. Now, if you remember my video, I said that if unless that switch turns off at some point, I can't turn it back on. Well, if I go back to this device, I can turn on this option here, which is enable auto off. So I'm going to set this to 500 milliseconds. Save preferences. Now, what should happen is I can turn this on and it should turn itself off pretty much immediately. So let's turn it on and off. You'll see if, if you know if you saw that, but it turned off, turn on and then switch it right back to off. I'll do that again. Just watch where it says current states. There we go. And my fan just turned on. The other device is already turned off, so nothing happened there, but the, the thermostat fan just turned on. So that is how you can do um, a switch without having to do that little thing of turning it back off. If you're using a virtual switch, you can do it there. So let's just kind of recap. We talked about a lot of different things here. First off, we talked about the difference between a button and a switch. Remember, a, a switch has an on state and an off state. A button triggers a result. And then we talked about this virtual switch um, having an, a, an, auto, uh, a, an auto off enabled so that it essentially turns it into a button but remember the amazon echo will not see a button and the google home does not will see the button but it doesn't know how to make it work apparently so i hope that helps i hope it's not too confusing if you have questions please don't hesitate to put them down in the comment section below if you like what we're doing here make sure you hit that thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification so you're notified when new videos go live that's it for today. I hope it all made sense. We'll see you guys next time. See ya.